Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with Jen Grinnells. Jen, thank you so much for making the time today. Thanks for having me. You know, I know you released Go Mine in November. You have Jen Grinnells Live Volume 1 in February. But from what I understand, that's also uh, two of three. There's one more to come, is there not? Actually, the third one came first. Oh, it so, did? Okay. Yeah. So in um, May of last year, I released an album called Siren Songs, mm -hmm. um, which is a new group that I have with my best friend. It's mm -hmm. acoustic folk Americana. So that was first. And then, then came Gum Mine, then came the live album. Ah, so Along with six singles <laughs> from other stuff and collaborations. So, so, so what has this process been like? I, I know you've always been prolific, but to be able to juggle these various releases over a short period of time because then there's this stuff the the promotion and just sort of the rollout yeah i actually uh, wasn't prolific <laughs> before <laughs> this i um pretty much was on tour for you know 10 years mm -hmm. and i was not good at writing material while on the road so um the last time I released an official studio album was 2012, mm -hmm. which is almost embarrassing. And then I released like a limited release um, live album in 2015. But, you know, that required no writing of any sort, really, because I was just <laughs> put down like, you know, the show. Yeah. Um, and so then um, I think after all that, I, I went, uh, I joined Patreon. That changed my life. Mm -hmm. And then I could focus on writing. And I took a little sabbatical and I wrote a bunch um, down in Mexico and down in Nicaragua. And that kind of became the beginning of this prolific period. So, you know, wrote the album, Go Mine and, and recorded it. And like you said, like there's just, there's a lot of lead up time. Yeah. And um, then the pandemic hit and it really just forced me to A, not tour <laughs> and like <laughs> be kind of pivot as an artist and it was like okay well I'll just kind of write as fast as I can and put stuff out as fast as I can mm. and so that created this whole other like new bodies of work mm. as well as having this album so it's just like everything kind of came out at the same time <laughs> so the perfect storm of creativity because maybe without being isolated, pandemic, that kind of stuff, you wouldn't have been in one place long enough to, to get all this together? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was just, I think touring took up so much time and focus and energy and taking that out of the equation mm -hmm. and putting all these artists in this place where they're like, um, I have nothing to do. I can't go anywhere. Yeah. I've never collaborated so much in my life. So it, it was a completely different year for me yeah. than I've ever had. I'm sure for any artist, it was a totally yeah. different year. But yeah, it was the perfect storm of that forced creativity and just having a lot of things to write about. So, you know, I was putting out an album with songs I had written two years prior, but then I'm also putting out a bunch of songs that I'm doing with people about what we're going through right now. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it interesting releasing a live album? I know you recorded that album in 2019, correct? Mm -hmm. So to be releasing that at a time when you can't necessarily play live. Yeah. Um, it's made it, I think I, I felt just like I've, I've done it. It's packaged. It's ready. It was hard to wait to release it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, cause it almost feels like as an artist, you're like, I already got that out. I'm through it. I'm past it, you know, but then to have this year pause and then revisit it because now it's time to promote it and time to talk about it mm -hmm. and have it be such an interesting, I mean, I never knew when I was gonna release a live album that there would be a feeling of like nostalgia. Like yep. I didn't know there was gonna be this feeling of, oh my God, remember live music? Mm -hmm. Remember, you're, isn't it crazy to know that we're almost back to it? And so it's made it, um, it was already an emotional album, but I think it's just made it more intense. And I've really appreciated the reviews that I've gotten mm -hmm. um, for it because I do think it's impossible to listen to it without feeling like, oh my God, we've yeah. been missing this in our lives. Pulling you back into a space that, you know, for me, when I listen to it, 
I, I just like, I had these feelings of, I could smell the clubs I would go to, you know, like <laughs> yeah. their senses started hitting me that, that it goes, oh my God, I haven't been into one of these places in over a year now. Yeah, it gives you a visceral memory, a visceral feeling that you wouldn't have had if you, if, if I had released a live album when concerts were happening, yeah. none of that feeling would be associated with it. So it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of intense mm. to be releasing it right now. You know, one of the things that I just personally as a music fan always wonder is, is when you know you're recording an album that will be, you know, a, a live performance that'll be on an album, does that change your performance mindset? Do you get up on the stage and do you think there's more pressure beyond this sort of like real life, we're in the moment moment? Um, I've had that before where I thought, oh God, I'm paying extra, so I better not screw it up. Like that sort of thing. <laughs> But that wasn't the case uh, with this album because um, I had, I want to say I had 10 concerts recorded. Mm -hmm. So I made a grid mm -hmm. of what songs I had performed at which, which venues. And I had um, my co-producer Blossom and I, we went through this grid and we listened to, you know, at least eight versions, wow. if not 10, of every. Of, and not just of the songs that ended up, but like, you know, my whole set was like 20 songs. So mm -hmm. I mean, we listened to thousands and thousands of songs <laughs> and we took notes and we, you know, took notes about the banter and we took notes about the audience and the, the notes about the quality, not just the performance, but the energy and all of that stuff. And then we distilled it down to mm. the tracks that you hear. So that's why it's called live volume one, as opposed to live at mm -hmm. Rams yep. stage, because it's, um, it ended up just purely coincidentally it ended up being from three three different nights I mean it could have been from eight different nights but mm -hmm. just we just we didn't really base it on we weren't hoping for a certain venue or anything yeah. we just this is our favorite version hmm. of this song and then it they just happened to come from these three nights so there must have been something really special those three nights you know like and I think you can hear it like there's definitely tracks where the audience is just so engaged and so funny and and you know there's just such a good energy or there's other nights where i just happen to have band members that just were inspired and killed mm -hmm. it and, um so uh what you're hearing is my favorite selections from you know hundreds of mm -hmm. songs <laughs> are they when you when you looked at the track listing are they in the order of what you would normally play for your set list yes they are and and that wasn't it, not exactly but mm -hmm. um that is kind of what ended up happening and it, and it wasn't on purpose i mean uh we we had this huge wall with this grid and like it became this puzzle to piece together the mm -hmm. story and the banter and like the um the tone of the songs and when we ended up with with it feeling tonally and and pace wise i was like that's that's pretty much the show I do right there. You know, like maybe probably like the first two songs that are on the album are always, I usually do one or the other first. Mm -hmm. So it totally made sense that it was like, you yeah. know, bam, bam, one, two. And then same thing with the last two tracks. Um, they, you know, usually there's a song called Good Is New and it's where people are dancing on stage with me and everyone's singing and it's just like this big ruckus and, mm -hmm. I love ending with that. And then I'll come out and I'll do Can't Stay Here as a solo encore. We kind of flipped that and did Can't Stay Here second to last so that we could end the record with like a big thing. Right. So it's like really yeah. close to the actual performance. <laughs> and I wouldn't say um, the the songs, it kind of is weird. Like I know that there's certain songs that for whatever reason were performed out of order. Mm -hmm when the night they were performed, but in terms of how it ended up. It fell back in line. Yeah. <laughs> the universe works in mysterious ways. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I think it's just, I, I always say to people, like my concert is a show. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost got written banter because just the way that things have evolved over the years and constantly touring all the time. So um, I was happy that it, it's like yeah it fell into that for a reason like mm. there's there's a reason that i open with a, such a dynamically different like a song that has a big dynamic shift and there's a reason i open with like a joke you know mm. yeah um, so i think it all worked out in the well, end 
Well, that vibe that you said about it, it's almost like a show. Do you think once you can get back out on the road, once you can start touring again, is it going to start feeling fresh for you now? Like where it's like almost like you mentioned nostalgic listening to live music, but what about performing it live? Um, I think that that album, that live album is this perfect capsule of that's what my show was pre-pandemic. Like if you went to a Jen Grinnell's concert before the pandemic, that's like a really great representation of what you would see. Mm -hmm. I think I've written or co-written so many songs during the last year that when I get back out on the road, it's going to be a totally new show mm -hmm. that'll develop over yep. the years because I like, of course I love to play songs that people are like, ah, that's your oldest song, but it's my favorite. You know, of course mm -hmm. I'll have that in there, but I love singing about what I'm going through at the time. And I want people to, I just, and I'm really proud of what I've written in the last year too. These things that weren't planned that just happened really quickly. And I, I really want to get those in front of people. So mm -hmm. I think it will be very fresh and very new and it'll take time to develop into the type of show that the last one was. Yep. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. And, you know, and just thinking about that, all these songs that you you've written in this past year, I mean, this is like a, a body of work. This is like a catalog for a lot of artists over a, a lifetime. And here you are having done this all in a year. What does it feel like to, is there pressure to carry that forward to, to release another album and two albums next year, that kind of thing? Oh, the momentum um, yeah. and the pace. Um, is there pressure? I don't, I, I don't Or even self-induced, like that you enjoyed this process so much that you want to see the torch carry forward. I do think that there's has been um, a pivot for me because I used to be like touring is what I love and performing is what I love. And I do mm -hmm. love it. But now that I know I can also survive being prolific, just, mm -hmm. you know, putting stuff out, turning it out, especially because of Patreon. Um, Patreon has made it so that like I am financially <laughs> rewarded for yeah. continuing to put out work mm -hmm. and so I think it's more like I'm motivated that way because I need to pay my bills mm -hmm. I'm motivated to just focus on creativity I also and I also have continuing all the collaborations I have loved working with um, an artist named Al Howard I've loved working with an artist named Jesse Rubin and then of course my um, band with my best friend mm -hmm. Siren Songs so I want to continue that process um, but I will say that when I put out the musical, I mean, sorry, not the musical, the live album. Mm -hmm. I also wrote a musical. I'll talk about that yeah. next. <laughs> when I put out the live album, that was, like I said, three albums and I think six, six or seven singles. There was a little bit of a like a, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> you breathe, yeah. I just needed space. Like I needed space for like not thinking about self-promotion and, um, mm -hmm. And I'll take a breather, but I, I also know, like, I think there's still three Siren Song singles and an album already coming on the horizon. Wow. Um, I'm still working with Al. I'm still working with Jesse. And then um, I also, when I took a, the sabbatical, I wrote a musical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's on the horizon, too. Nice. So I, I think it's, I don't know that there's pressure to keep the pace up. I think it's almost out of necessity to, like, it's just a, it's just like music industry is different for me now. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned the, how sort of creatively successful your sabbatical was, but aren't sabbaticals supposed to be just relaxing and not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I, I think it was just, it was serendipitous how it worked or maybe it wasn't, maybe I put the things in motion and didn't really realize it that, I needed a break from touring. It had been a decade. I was mm -hmm. so burnt out. I also, I was touring to pay my bills. That's a mm -hmm. lot of pressure and yeah. a lot uh, of, um, yeah, just pressure. It was exhausting. And then Patreon got to the point where I'm like, oh, if I, if I write every month, I can also pay my bills as long as I go find a place that is the cost of living mm -hmm. is a, a, mm -hmm. a, a lot. So it was just a great opportunity to take a sabbatical from touring. I still had to write in order to survive, 
And then at the same time, um, I got this commission to write a musical. Mm -hmm. So I was simultaneously writing an album and a musical and relaxing in Mexico and Nicaragua. Oh. So you're right. It wasn't a total break, but it was a break from the <laughs> touring a, craziness. It was a good break. Yeah, it was a productively productive break for both creativity and relaxation. Yes. Yeah. And also <laughs> just like, oh, I can write a song. I remember now. <laughs> Sometimes it becomes this like magical thing that I don't remember how to, that I can do yeah. that. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. And, you know, and with that, whether it's touring, whether it's songwriting, what is it that music does for you now, even if it's something different than it was 10 years ago, emotionally, spiritually, that you can't get from another creative medium? Even, even something like, you know, a, a musical. What, what, what is it just about your own work, your own creative output that, that sparks you to, to move forward? My biggest spark still comes from performing. It still comes from um, that feeling that you get that is that you can't get from any other medium. I mean, I used to do musical theater. Uh, mm -hmm. That was my first career. And the reason I'm not still with it and the reason, well, I mean, I guess I'm getting back into it, but <laughs> the reason I love music as a medium is that feeling of writing a song from your own experience, getting in front of a hundred, thousand people not a hundred thousand but hundreds or thousands of mm -hmm. people and singing that song and having that feeling of connectivity where you just can feel that there are people in the room that are injecting their own life experience <laughs> into that song mm -hmm. and that you have that moment of connectivity and that is a very addicting and very fulfilling thing and I think that's always what I'm striving for mm -hmm. is to have that cathartic therapeutic feeling if I'm writing a song about my own experience. But then when you share it with people and they grab onto it, that's the most intense. So mm -hmm. that's always kind of what I'm chasing. Um, and I think, yeah, that's what I'm chasing. And, and since I'm taking a pause from the performing part and I'm just writing, um, I think so just writing a song, I think a lot of artists say it, it's just, it's just magical. Like that you create something that wasn't there two seconds mm -hmm. ago. And when it's a good song and you're just, you obsess with it for, you're obsessed for the next 72 hours and you can't wait for people to hear it. And yep. you know, that, that is such a high that's, that's also addicting. <laughs> Do you think that there's an infinite number of songs inside an artist or, or, or is there like you're capped out, this is all you get? Make them count. Uh, no, I think there's an infinite number. As long as you're writing from, I mean, cause yeah, your, your imagination and your own experiences are, mm -hmm. they can be infinite, right? So, mm. and especially as somebody who, I think it's, I am get better and better. I don't think like, I wrote my best song at 22 and yep. done. <laughs> um, well, and, and, you, and you live more life and therefore put more experience into your songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, I, I think I learned the people I'm collaborating with right now. I'm learning a lot from them. And it's mm -hmm. before I had a, a lot of trouble collaborating. Um, so I think there's an infinite amount for sure. Nice. Well, you know, that uh, finally, I just wanted to touch on those collaborations. I'm curious, are, are you somebody now? And it sounds like it wasn't always this way, but that that creative output from the others that you're working with, does that feed your own creativity, like almost like a effort inspires effort. You see it and you're just like, wow, I want to up my game because that sounds so amazing. And what they're doing is so amazing. Um, yes. Although it's really weird because I used to be the type of songwriter that was like, I cannot coll collaborate with anyone. No one can be within earshot. I'm going to like go over into my little corner and write and nobody can mm -hmm. see it and hear it and, or anything. I was, it was like, I was very, very precious about it. Mm -hmm. And then with this last year being so collaborative and everybody collaborates in a different way. Um, I was just realizing that I haven't written a song on my own. Uh, in, in like probably a year or two years. Wow. So I hope I get that feeling that you were just describing of mm -hmm. like, Oh, this is so inspiring. I want to go and like 
inject that same creative energy into my own work that I do solo. Um, but I haven't felt that yet. Right now, I've just felt really comfortable and really inspired by other people in these collaborations. Awesome. Well, Jen, thank you so much for making the time today. What's the best way for people to connect with you and the albums and just sort of, you know, follow the journey as the world opens up and hopefully you get back on the road? <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoy Instagram lately. Mm -hmm. I say that slowly because I might change my mind back. I don't know. <laughs> um, Spotify has, you know, all the things that I put out because we can put them out so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and your Patreon too? People oh God, out. yeah. Patreon yep. is, is a life game changer for artists. So mm -hmm. if people aren't familiar with Patreon, they should definitely go check that out. Cool. Awesome. Jen, thank you so much for giving us some of your afternoon today. I really appreciate it. No problem. Short and sweet. That was great. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, best of luck with, uh, again, getting back out on the road and being able to tap back into that live vibe that I think we're all missing because in this day and age of feeling so divided as a country and everything else, there, nothing beats just sort of the unity of being in a room and listening to music that you all love. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.